this turn. We've got our uh, sequence of play already up. Uh, the Union uh, Rosencrantz is going to issue new orders this turn, I've decided. Uh, since 21st core, and specifically, I hope I got this right, uh, yeah, Woods Division, uh, uh, Woods Division. Um, now that he's in place, I'd like to order him to advance, and what I decided to do is to order 21st core to take take over these three hexes here and to set up a defensive line. Uh, what that will do is pretty much prohibit the um, the Army of the Tennessee from setting up its artillery like, like it wants to if it uh, could ever uh, implement an order from, from, from Bragg. Uh, uh, this is where, in this area is right where they've got uh, five, arti uh, five artillery counters here that they'd like to set up along here, uh, uh, but by moving 21st Corps into here, I'm going to effectively take away all those he all these hexes that they won't be able to, except for maybe here, won't be able to get their artillery set up. So, so that's so I'm good. So, and I've already written out that order here. So the order is to advance 21st Corps HQ and Woods Division to, I should have worded that a little bit more carefully, I'm not going to put 21st Corps in one of these three hexes that will be behind those, uh, to the to the uh, west of those hexes, but um, but close enough uh, to uh, the three hexes identified and set up a defensive line. Uh, so that order will arrive in the, the next turn, 1730, uh, and so we'll roll new order acceptance on that order in se uh, during the 1730 turn. Darn it. Uh, no core stoppage, no core tax stoppage checks to, to perform for the union. Um, any union initiative? Don't think so. We've got orders out to Negley's division and Reynolds' little division here. Um, already, and we're, we're issuing order. We just issued orders to the 21st Corps. Um, I don't see anything that would make me, as the Union player, want to roll for initiative. Delay reduction. So we have a couple orders in delay reduction. Oh no, actually, do we? Yeah, this one, actually, we have one currently in delay reduction. That's our order to Van Cleve. Um, I mean, the order we're rolling on, is now that I look at it, is actually no longer in effect. Um, I'm just going to actually just tear up that order, which I believe I'm allowed to do, because... Um, it's not really relevant anymore, so I'm just going to delete it. Actually, well, I won't delete it. I will just say deleted. I don't th think I want Van Cleve to implement this order anymore as the Union Commander. Run away. Or actually, canceled would be the. I don't think I need to issue a new order. Well, actually, now that I think about it, maybe I need to issue a new order to cancel the exist to cancel the one in delay. I think it was in D1 status. Well, since I don't have a new order written out, I'm just going to keep rolling. So, uh, so Van Cleve, so Van, uh, Van Cleve is in the order to Van Cleve is in D1 status. So we're going to roll. Uh, we need to roll one or two to get it accepted. Oh, and it is accepted. Well, so 
So this order is accepted. All right. So we'll have to think about how we're going to handle that when we uh, get to the movement phase. Uh, so we've got two orders arriving this turn. Again, the order to Negley and the order to Reynolds. Um, so we need to look at the acceptance table. And I just wish I had an even bigger screen. Okay, so so Negley and Rosencrantz are each one, so that's a two. It's an oral, so it's a minus one, so that's one. And then complex is minus two, so we're on, on unfortunately on the minus one table here. So at least, so there's no chance of it being accepted this turn, but hopefully we'll get, uh, you know, speaking as the, uh, speaking as Rosencrantz, hopefully we'll get a D1 result here. So we need to roll a 2D6. Rolled a 10 on the minus one. That's a D2 result, unfortunately. And we'll do, let's see, so. <clears throat> And then for the, for our other order, uh, Reynolds is a three and Rosencrantz is a one. So that's four. Minus one for oral is three. Minus two for complex is one. So we're on this table here, the zero to one column, I mean. And we rolled a seven on the Okay, so that was D1 status. And then there's no new orders to to roll on for acceptance this turn. So we're done with the command phase. Uh, let's see, this is the set. So we could potentially recover stragglers here for Van Cleve's division. Not really important and well, uh, probably not ultimately important given that we're playing a scenario here and it's not going, the battle's not going to extend or the game is not going to extend to the next day. Uh, but just to, uh, but let's take a look at Van Cleve's losses here. Am I looking at the right, yeah. Where's Van Cleve? There he is. So both Barnes and Beatty could really uh, stand to uh, recover stragglers. And we have a marker here already. That's Barnes. So where's Begley? Oh, Beatty, I mean, here. So we'll put, and I think he's extended. Yes. So we'll put a uh, straggler recovery marker on him too because he is in command radius and he's at least four hexes away from any enemy uh, um, marker you know unit so so he would be eligible to recover stragglers so Uh, 
Let's see, is it this one? Yes. So that will go on here. And I guess we're supposed to treat those extended counters as separate counters for all for as many purposes as possible. So we'll do put one there too. Move him up to the top of the stack. Okay. So we've, we've placed straggler recovery markers. Now it's movement in close combat. So who, if anyone, can I move? Don't think I can move anyone this turn. Oh, I can move. Well, I'm just going to just try to be really methodical here and just check my orders one more time just to make sure I'm not overlooking something. Uh, oh, well, we, I guess we need to think about, I don't think we are going to move. Well, let's see. <laughs> uh, once Negley's division is ready to take over defense of the Lafayette Road, Van Cleese's division should cede the defense of the Lafayette Road to Negley's division and support Reynolds' division to the south. Um, I think I can show good faith towards executing that order by finding um, there's one Dick's division here is I can I've been reading rules for the Great Battles of the American Civil War game series, and so I've got, I'm trying to hold two sets of rules in my head at the same time. Where is... Oh, just remind myself. So, so six movement points. So I'm going to move Dick's Brigade here. I think I should be okay for stacking, yeah. One. I think that's a clear hex. Two. Four. Six. Move him there. His facing looks good. He's within command radius of Van Cleave. Um, yeah, so I think at least for this turn, I think we've met the requirements of the order. Um, This order is fulfilled or completed, we can say. Uh, and we're, we do need to move 320 north to defend the road near the Brock Cabin. So like right in here. So we're not done with that order. Oy, oy, oy. A lot of units here. Um, let's see where everyone is. So, so I'm going to move him one, two, three, four. Well, that's Wilder's. That's okay. That's Wilder's brigade there. We haven't done anything with him. Uh, is anyone from 20th Corps here? No. These are all... Well, the t Sheridan in the top brigade is 20th Corps, so we'll move Sheridan. 
just going to put him in the Brock farm. Move him to the side for a second. Move the AB counter here. These are 21st core. And then here's our core commander. I'm here along with our HQ and and then I guess we can do our facing. Oh, and the and the artillery. Um, two, three, four, five. We'll leave him kind of at the crossroads here, and we'll put him underneath. So and he doesn't have enough movement. Well, wait. He gets to use the. Ah, does he get to use the road rate if these units are on the road? I'm going to say he doesn't. I'm just going to make a judgment call here in the interest of time. I'm going to put the infantry on top. And I think that's all of 20th Corps. Oh, and, and the supply wagon. Um, I hope it's okay to move the supply wagon through all this stuff. I think it is. And we'll put the supply wagon here. All right, now I think we've got it. Oh wait, did I? I said the Brock House, right? Yeah, was, okay. There it is, let me do. Yeah, I think I ordered I think I moved this to the place. I, so it is actually, I've got things pretty well lined up with Davis now, Davis's division. So I've got 20th Corps pretty much, yeah, I've got them all in one within command radius of each other. So, uh, so I think next turn, I think I will launch an attack with 20th Corps uh, uh, east. I think that's all the movement I'm eligible to perform because everyone else is either awaiting an order or is in delay status. I'm just going to check that one more time. Because I am prone to mistakes if I don't take care. I'm going to say his order is completed. As well as this one. All right, that's everyone. So done, done with that. No ammo resupply. Uh, and still no one is eligible to perform fire combat. Um, it's been a quiet game, obviously. Uh, just pretty much a battle of, mainly a battle of position so far. But that's because the Army of the, of the Army of Tennessee cannot uh, implement Bragg's orders to save its life. Um, 
So, oh, we can do straggler recovery now on the two units that have uh, counters on them. They continue to obviously continue to meet the conditions for straggler recovery. Demorel. Beam around. So I rolled the D first. Rolling a 1D6. Got a 1. Bragg would like one of those. Uh, but, uh, let's see, the morale is, let's see, D1 through 4, 0. So no, no stragglers recovered there. 5 on the B, so... So Beatty can recover one straggler. And if he can recover one more, he'll no longer be wrecked. Which, which if we're playing a real game, especially the campaign game, that would be important. Well, I mean, probably for the scenario too, just because one of the victory conditions, I mean, you lose victory points or the other side gets victory points, um, depending on how many wrecked core that you have. So, um, so wrecked cores are a matter of wrecked divisions. And actually, I think if I'd have to look at the instructions to remember exactly what wrecks a core, but obviously the more wrecked uh, brigades you have, the, the, the more wrecked your core is going to be. So, um, so if we were playing a real game here, uh, the Union player would be happy with that. And there's no rallying to be done. Nobody is shaken or disorganized or in route status. So I think we're done with the turn. Yes, we are. So we're d that's the end of the 1700 turn. So I'll, I'll stop the video here, and the next video will be the Confederate phase of the 1730 turn. Thank you for watching.